right, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us once again. Uh, my name is Julia Hoffman. I'm the Merkin Fellowship Program Manager in the Division of Graduate Education and Postdoctoral Affairs. Um, and my colleague, Felicity Dominguez uh, Howell, is on the line as well. I'll give her a second for her to introduce herself. Felicity, you there? Yes. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Felicity Dominguez Howell. I am the Graduate Education and Postdoctoral Affairs Fellowship Advisor, and I'm happy to be here with you all today. Great. Thanks so much. Okay, so for everybody here, um, we will be going over the myriad wonderful opportunities there are for graduate students to study abroad. Um, when we thought about holding this workshop, we realized we actually have a ton of opportunities, both um, internal, intramural um, to UCSD and extramural, ones that are external to, um, to UCSD. But often grad students just don't know about them. Um, we all know about, you know, graduate students, or excuse me, uh, undergraduates who have studied abroad, um, but it's, it's less common that we hear about um, graduate student opportunities, especially funded opportunities. So we really wanted to bring these to light and let you know of um, both existing and long existing programs that might not have been surfaced, um, but also some new opportunities that are, are coming up as well. So what we're going to do is we will start with the intramural funding opportunities. So what that means are ones that are um, internal to UC San Diego. So I'll turn it over to my colleague, Felicity. So this is called the Friends of the International Center Fellowship. Um, the FIC was a nonprofit all-volunteer organization that was founded in 1961. It has since dissolved, and it dissolved in September 2021. The mission of the, of the FIC was to support international education, to foster friendship, understanding, and cooperation within the international community, and to create a meeting place on the UC San Diego campus for people who share these aims. The fellowship is now an endowed fellowship that we maintain here at the university and the FIC award funds graduates the award funds graduate students whose research contains in an international component and or global relevance. Um, the nominations will be open this year from February through March um, those funds will be sent out to the to the winners or the fellows in Mar in May of 2023. Um, nominated students, this is a very common question. Um, can the nominated students be US citizens? Yes. Can they be international students? Yes. So as long as you're a grad student and you're wanting to study abroad, um, the fellowship prize is $2,000. Eligibility is PhD or master's students who are obtaining the highest degree level in their field. You must have completed one full year um, of your graduate study before um, before the time of the award. So if you're in your first year now and the award will be made in May, yes, you can apply. Students must be registered for a full-time program at of study and research. So if you're half time or below half, unfortunately, you would have to be a full-time student. And then there's a link on this. Um, so afterward, these slides will be made available and these links will be able will be used. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Felicity. So I'll jump in for this one. Um, this is, as I introduced myself earlier, this is the program that I um, am a manager for. So this is entirely new. It's very exciting. Um, Dr. Richard Merkin decided that uh, he would like to try to uh, fund our UC San Diego graduate students to study abroad, uh, specifically students who are studying translational medicine. Um, so what that means is if you are uh, studying anything related to from bench to bedside to community is kind of the way that it's been described. So if you are working on some kind of uh, clinical or healthcare or other um, you know, field that really touches um, the patient experience, medicine, imp improves clinical outcomes, improves uh, patient care, healthcare, um, that these these kinds of awards will be um, can be eligible. Um, so what I'm saying here is basically, you know, while translational medicine might be thought of as limited to just 
biomedical sciences or other, you know, maybe more obvious fields we think of. In fact, this can be um, fairly open to a lot of disciplines. In fact, we're really interested in interdisciplinary projects um, that can range from anywhere to somebody who is in the lab studying cancer cells to somebody who is in, you know, anthropology to, to name some examples of recent fellows um, who are studying um, healthcare systems in, in other countries. So if you are uh, studying anything related to these, these uh, topics or translational medicine, you may be eligible for this. This one is limited to uh, PhD students currently. In fact, um, we are prioritizing uh, PhD uh, candidates. Um, and, and for this fellowship, um, you would be going abroad for either one to two quarters. You can choose your duration of your study. And in fact, what's really cool about this program is that you choose the entire way you do your research. So um, a lot of times people will choose a lab site, either at an, at an academic site or an industry um, in another country, and they will set up the relationship with the PI, or maybe they have an existing one. Um, they propose the research site, propose their research, and that's how you apply. You, you have uh, supporting letters of recommendation, of course, um, and every quarter we'll review applications to then send our next cohort of Merkin graduate fellows abroad. So our next deadline is coming up uh, on Friday, January 20th. So you have uh, maybe almost, yeah, a little over two months if you're interested in applying for uh, the next cycle. Um, what that means, though, it doesn't mean that you have to go immediately. So there are some people who um, apply in a certain quarter. For example, our most recent fellows applied this fa fall quarter. Some of them are traveling this coming winter, but then others are traveling in spring or as late as summer or fall of this coming uh, academic year. Um, there is, you know, um, an advantage to applying earlier each academic year because we can fund about 15 to 25 uh, uh, graduate students per year. Uh, per year, um, this depends on how many people choose the three-month option or the five, uh, or excuse me, the six-month option. So if you're applying earlier on, we may well have some more funds to provide. So that means you don't have to wait until the quarter, you know, before you'd like to uh, go abroad. Maybe you apply this winter, but you wouldn't want to be traveling until the fall, you know, next summer or so. Um, just to kind of, you know, plant those seeds. If you have any questions, um, please first look at our website. It's very detailed, lots of FAQs, um, but then also don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll provide my contact information uh, when I email everybody the, the slides and a link to the recording. Okay, so now Felicity. Okay, so this is the Jay Yang Scholarship Program. What makes this scholarship program so great is that it's for Taiwanese students here at UC San Diego. Um, the Jay Yang family and foundation provides graduate scholarship in incentives to increase the number of Taiwanese students pursuing graduate study at UC San Diego. The funding is for new PhD students and early career continuing PhD students. Um, the, the, excuse me, the is up to $25,000 of tuition and fee scholarships with a UC San Diego departmental match. New and continuing master's students tuition scholarships up to applicable UC San Diego departmental match not to exceed 10,000. Nominations are the nomination windows are announced each February opening in the spring quarter. Please contact your home department or chair or graduate coordinator to start the nomination procedure. Each department may nominate up to three students. Department coordinators nominate candidates and priority is given to incoming students, followed by early year continuing students. And once more, we have a collab page and this link would take you straight to that once these slides are made available. This is the Tyler Center for Global Studies Fellowship. It funds fellowships for graduate students pursuing international study abroad programs and research opportunities. Departments may nominate up to four students. It's anticipated that the Tyler Center gift at UC San Diego will fund four to six fellowships this academic year. 
Um, this is a one time award. Amounts will range from 1,000 to 5,000 per recipient based on proposed budgets. Awarded funds must be fully expended no later than July 2024. Um, it's an exciting time because the nominations are now open and they will close on Wednesday, January 11th, 2023. This is the Lindau Nobel Laureate meeting. And of the Nobel laureates, um, the meetings have had, they have held 76 meetings in the last 69 years. Nobel laureates are members of foundations. Nobel laureates are the members of the foundation and there's 350. Young scientists have, 600 young scientists have participated on average in a single meeting, 408 Nobel laureates have participated in the Lindau meeting since 1951, and 133 countries have sent their brightest students. Next slide. The Lindau meetings bring together 600 university students and postdoctoral fellows from around the world who spend one week absorbing lectures by, Lin by Nobel laureates and interacting with them in smaller groups to discuss their own research. The 2023 meetings will be held from June 25th through June 30th. And they will concentrate on the fields of medicine and physiology. To be eligible masters and doctoral students demonstrating excellence in research and academic work. Postdoctoral scholars with five years of Postdoctoral experience preferred two to three years after the excuse me after the doctoral degree demonstrating research excellence via publications and international or invited conference presentations. You must be less than 35 years of age at the time of the meeting, with exceptions for special cases. You may not have a permanent position, which means employment. Um, so also not have participated in a previous Lindau meeting, and you have to belong to the top 5% of your class. You must be fluent in English, prepared to actively participate in discussion with laureates and young scientists, and you must have a genuine interest in engagement in science and research. Excellence in principal field of studies and demonstrated commitment to interdisciplinary work. The theme of this are to educate, inspire, and connect, and it has led to these meetings and places where the students not only learn but begin to build research and networks that will enrich their lives and help create the broadest sense of community. Okay, so now we're going to move on to extramural funding opportunities. Um, so these were will be ones that are um, external uh, or ex externally handled and, and funded um, outside of UC San Diego, but UC San Diego uh, students are eligible to apply um, according to those the specific eligibility rules that each one has. So we'll go ahead and start off with uh, the Global Exchange Program Plus. Now, this is slightly confusing because UC San Diego plays a very strong role in um, organizing these programs, um, but they're technically run by each of the institutions that, um, that one can be placed at in, in one of these um, internship opportunities. So what this is, is basically four, um, four different locations. So there's Lausanne, Switzerland, Paris, Munich, um, and Costa Rica, where one can choose to do um, research, you know, an internship, um, or a professional experience abroad. Uh, these are all STEM focused. Um, so these are um, open to all students, uh, including undergrads, but it, they tend to um, prefer graduate students and um, there are more graduate students who are who have been doing these programs typically. Um, these are, you know, these are a good option because these can be um, a shorter duration. Um, they can be more flexible with the academic calendar. Um, and in one case, in the case of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, um, students can receive a scholarship of excellence to cover the cost of, of living. At um, EP, students receive a scholarship there as well. 
And um, they're also, the, the Global Exchange Program is also building a program in Italy for clinical rotations for any of our students who are doing um, MD degrees or uh, PhD MD or any of our, our clinical students. If you want more information about it and including information about how to apply, just go, go to globalexchange.ucsd.edu. Um, you can also email global at ucsd.edu with any specific questions that aren't uh, answered on the website already. And then for the Fulbright. So many people have heard of the Fulbright, but some people have not, um, and it's really worth checking out if you haven't already. Um, for study and research awards, and I should mention up front that there are many different versions of the Fulbright. So somebody might tell you, oh, I did a Fulbright, and that could mean something very different than what somebody else telling you means when they say, I did a Fulbright or I got a Fulbright. Um, so just know there's a lot to explore with the Fulbrights. I'll go over a couple that are um, specifically helpful for graduate students, um, but just know that there's, you know, it's worth checking out on the website, especially for more detailed information about eligibility. For the research awards, um, in this case, the candidate designs a research proposal for a country. So going back to the, the Merkin Fellowship, not, not too dissimilar there. Um, and similarly, um, it would be at a university or, or another research institute. Um, but in this case, all fields of study are welcome. So um, this you know, includes arts, business, journalism, STEM, public health, um, and the awards are available in about 140 countries. So you have a lot to choose from there. Um, the awards include living stipends, health insurance, airfare, um, and then a lot of this can be very country specific. So it's worth taking a look if you are interested in going to a particular uh, country and, and applying for the Fulbright. It's again, worth taking a look at the website, fulbright.ucsd.edu, as well as some other external links to the Fulbright program itself that that link or that website includes, um, because certain countries will indicate, you know, they might have more benefits or they might have more specific eligibility requirements. Um, what's really cool about UC San Diego's Fulbright program or the way that it runs its, its uh, Fulbright program here um, is that there is a program advisor, a Fulbright program advisor here. Um, her name is Andra Jacques. She's wonderful. And she herself has been um, multiple times a re recipient of the Fulbright Award. Um, so she provides one on one advising. Um, she helps organize a cohort of other Fulbright applicants. Um, and what you can do is um, if you if you apply through UC San Diego, um, you can uh, work with her to have review and feedback on your, your application materials, um, participate in writing workshops, mock interviews. It's basically um, a ton of preparation for getting to the second stage, which is actually the Fulbright program itself, the kind of national Fulbright programs review. So what this often means is there's an earlier deadline for the internal UC San Diego uh, Fulbright Award. You don't have to go through that. You don't have to you know, apply early, um, but we do see much greater success among students who have applied with the help of UCSD um, with that, that guidance um, once they're getting to that larger kind of Fulbright pool. So essentially what the UCSD process does is um, it's, it puts together resources for you. Um, and there is that earlier deadline because um, it actually kind of organizes a mock Fulbright process, essentially. So it's almost like a, a, a demo process of going through the Fulbright, going through the selection, and then you're super ready to go through the actual Fulbright assessment um, because you've had mock interviews with, you know, with uh, people on campus and um, other kinds of reviews that make your application much stronger. Um, you also um, get to have just membership as a part of the Fulbright Association. Um, you also, if you ever participate in the Fulbright, um, non-competitive eligibility for employment in U.S. government, um, and you know, amazing resume builder. That is for sure the the case. Everybody recognizes the the Fulbright name, so it's very much worth uh, looking into. And then specifically, there's also the Fulbright Hayes Doctoral Dissertation Research uh, Abroad Award. This one is for, as indicated in the name, doctoral students um, who want to conduct research abroad um, and specifically research in foreign languages and area studies. Um, so the geographic areas, um, you know, and, and the uh, academic fields um, 
can be or, or are uh, specified as science, climate change, technology, engineering, math, computer science, education, international development, political science, public health, or economics, or economics, excuse me. And um, usually the awards range from 15,000 to 60,000 even uh, for up to six, or excuse me, for six to 12 months of study. Um, it will depend on your proposal, your length of study, um, and about 90 awards are given each year. Uh, for more information, we'll include the, the hyperlink in our slides when we send those out, but there's a collab page um, to, uh, to this information where you can learn more about the Fulbright-Hayes DDRA. Okay, Felicity. This is the Bourne Award for International Study. The Bourne Fellowships fund research and language study proposals by U.S. graduate students in world regions critical to U.S. interests. Scholars and fellows study, study a wide range of critical languages, Arabic, Mandarin, Chinese, Portuguese, Russian, Hindi, Korean, Japanese, and Swahili, to name a few. Preferred destinations are Africa, Asia, Central, and Eastern Europe in the Middle East. One benefit about being an alumni is award alumni, alumni receive preferential hiring considerations and exclusive opportunities for government jobs. There is a strong emphasis on public policy issues related to U.S. national security. Preference is given to applicants who are interested in careers in federal government. Eligibility. Students of all proficiency levels who are committed to enhancing their skills. They must be a US citizen at the time of application. Being a naturalized citizen is also an eligibility. Um, you must be nationalized at the time of your application. Non-citizens of the country, you must be a non-citizen of the country you're planning to study in. So if you have a dual citizenship to France or Italy or Africa or somewhere in Eastern Europe, you would not be eligible in that specific location. You must be enrolled in graduate student. You must be an enrolled graduate student at the time of application. Funding maximum awards are determined by duration abroad. Up to twenty five thousand for twenty five to fifty two weeks is preferred. Up to twelve thousand five hundred for twelve to twenty four weeks, and up to twelve thousand for domestic language study. More information can be found and there's a webinar link below when the slides are available and the deadline is coming up soon, January 25th, 2023. So this is an open application opportunity and please feel free to, to reach out and move forward in that self-nominate opportunity. Next slide. This is a Chateaubriand Fellowship. The Chateaubriand, <laughs> Pardon me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Fellowship is a grant offered by the Embassy of France in the United States. It supports outstanding PhD students from US institutions who wish to conduct part of their doctoral research in France for a period ranging from four or eight to nine months. Fellows, selected, fellows are selected through merit-based competition, expert evaluation in France and US, the 2023 and 2024 academic deadline is coming up. It is January 13, 2023 at um, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And the award notifications will be made this spring in May, 2023. The fellowship is divided into two subgroups. The Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Um, so it is uh, mathematics and biology health. It's for doctoral students who aim to initiate or reinforce collaborations, partnerships, or joint projects between French and American research teams. This fellowship is offered through the Office of Science and Technology of the Embassy of France in partnership with American universities and French research organizations such as INSERM and INRIA. Eligibility. You must be currently working on your PhD. You must be registered in an American university. US citizenship is not required. However, French citizens are not eligible. 
All STEM and health research topics are eligible. For the STEM, there is a monthly stipend of 1,400 euros, round trip airfare to France, and support for health insurance abroad. Applications are evaluated by both a French and American scholar before being reviewed by a final selection committee. Selection criteria are as follows. Academic rele relevance in the research project, applicants command of the subject, applicants command of literature in the field and added value of research in France. And then contribute contributions to France and US research dialogue. There will be links available once the slides are released um, for the application guidelines in the application form. Next slide. The Chateau Brand Fellowship in Humanities and Social Sciences is offered by the Cultural Services of the French Embassy. The HHS, HSS program targets outstanding PhD students enrolled in U.S. institutions who seek to engage in research in France and any discipline of humanities and social sciences. The HSS Chateau Brand program is supported by campus in France which provides assistance to fellows on site. Eligibility. You must be currently working on your PhD. You must be registered in an American university. US citizenship is not required. However, French citizens are not eligible. All STEM and health research topics are eligible. The benefits for this one are slightly different where there is a monthly stipend of 1500 euros, round trip airfare, and health insurance for the duration of the fellowship is included. Applications are evaluated by both a French and American scholar before being reviewed by a final selection committee. Selection criteria are as follows, academic relevance and research of the project, the applicant's command of the subject, the applicant's command of literature in the field, and added value of research in France. Contribution to France and US research dialogue. And when these slides are available, these links will help you to apply. Great, well, thank you so much. Um, so that's it for our presentation of um, the slides. So I'm gonna go, gonna go ahead and stop the recording. And so then we'll have some time for Q&A. Um, so.